everyone, and welcome to Film Geek Time Machine. Hello. Hello. I am Austin Kennedy, your host. I'm Tim Kaiser, the other guy. That's the other guy, the other host, co-host. Yes, this is the podcast where I have a time machine, and I'm a film geek, so what does a film geek do? Goes back in time to see movies to random years. So that's this, what a film geek does. That's Well, if a film geek had a time machine, they would do that. Yes, and they were a psychopath. <laughs> well, I mean... I have fond memories of watching movies in the theater, and I still love going to movies in the theater. Yes, I have fond memories of my family members who have died in the past, but no, let's not go visit them. <laughs> let's go to a fucking movie. Well, we don't want to cause a paradox. so, so we, we can see them through a window. I just want to look at my grandmother. <laughs> okay, well, maybe, you know, maybe next time we go back to whatever in the 80s, we can we can do that. Yes, we'll go to New Richmond, Wisconsin <laughs> we in 19, do it this 1987. Time. Well, this time we're doing February 25th, 1993. It was a Thursday. And again, this is Minneapolis because we're from uh, Minnesota, so we chose the Minneapolis paper so this year i was i mean we were both live so i was 16 and you were this was 93 you said 93 february, february, february yeah i was 16 and a half 24 24 okay so i was actively seeing movies like i was already a film geek at this time so yes. i was seeing a lot of movies there's still a couple movies that i haven't seen so i wasn't in a the, virgin no <laughs> Oh, in 93? 93. 90, 90, I had I, I I had felt the touch of a human female. I actually wasn't either at this time. Oh, <laughs> well, the lot now when I was 16, <laughs> I was. So quit your fucking voting. Here we go. Uh, looking at the paper. So I have the paper held up. And this is, I'll tell you what's out. And since this was early in the year of 1993, there are, most of the movies out were holdovers from 1992 still. Yes. It's, and it's always going to happen in February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Oscars. And so, and, and, well, and pretty and much... nothing comes out Pretty in much that. everything that was nominated for Best Picture in 92 was available to see, and we did not see any of those. But oh. but hmm. Unforgiven and uh, Crying Game, Howard's End, Homeward Bound, is out, Army of Darkness, Groundhog Day. These are the ones we didn't see. Um, Summersby... Aladdin was out. Um, yes. River runs through I could have seen line. Aladdin for the 800th time. We almost picked... I could have skipped seeing it, and I still could have talked about it for 20 minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we almost saw um, National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. God, that's right. We could have seen we that. We almost did that. That Cem- would have been fun. Cemetery Club. Cool. Um, Untamed Heart. We have to, uh, Christian, the Christian Slater movie. But yeah, so but the movies we did pick were um, Toys was the first one. The Distinguished Gentleman. I picked that one because I've I've seen most of Eddie Murphy's movies, and this is one that I just I had no recollection. I, of this movie I missed even existing. I remember my mom going to see it in the theater, and I saw something else. I think I saw Muppet Christmas Carol instead. I, I'm going to tell you. It's always like the <laughs> spoiler <question>. alert. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, where oh, well, yeah, well, well, whatever. It's uh, Eddie Murphy. The third movie it's, it's, is an actually a 1993 movie, and that was um, Matinee. With John Goodman, that was a ninety. That was that a was, February January release. Yep, or yep, yep. It was February, Weird. and then and then another That's, ninety three movie they, is okay, Sniper. We we do Sniper. Was with, that a ninety three? Uh, also, it was ninety three. Tom Berenger okay. and Billy Zane, and then um, ninety two Holdover was, um, and it was only showing one like one theater, one showing nine fifty five. Lorenzo's Oil, George Miller, and I picked that because I'm a George Miller fan. He directed the Mad well, Max was, movies. That was, that was a movie that had been out for a while. Right. But it had like two nominations. So it did. Throw it in a theater. It did. Had screenplay <laughs> and Susan Sarandon was yes, nominated for Best which Actress. Which I checked so. that. It was original screenplay, not an adaptation. And right. I'm like, there wasn't like a book this was based on or something? No. Hey, by the way, I'm going to talk about the last movie right now, apparently. <laughs> okay, we'll skip, we'll shut up, Tim. Okay. So we, we go, before we go back, so... um. We're going to talk about the time period of February 25th, 1993 by the music. So we got to listen to the, what, yes. the mu- what the popular music was. I about. expected grunge. There so, is no grunge in Well, because it, it, wasn't, okay? it wasn't really, besides Pearl Jam and Nirvana, there really wasn't anything if that was really popular. If you listen to the alternative rock thing, I guess. Right. It's probably so at, at this time in, in, in uh, February of 93, I was listening to, you know, Nirvana and Alice in Chains and... And helmets and all all these you know great grunge bands. Um, yes, Kath- you Catherine were, you Wheel. Because um, you were sixteen. Yeah, and I, was, I was a fully grown 22 <laughs> year old adult. I hated everything on the radio. I did not. Actually. Yeah, why well, didn't I, I didn't actually re- having looked at this list already, and I'm like, oh, I, this, this is mostly fine. So this wasn't <laughs> stuff that I really listened to. This stuff. So the number one was "I Will Always Love You" by Whitney Houston, which was on the Bodyguard soundtrack, which was yes, um, 1992 November. But this was its 15th week on the chart. Yeah, it was. Huge. And I'm going to say at least 13 of those, was which was a cover one. of a Dolly Parton was, song. I yes, believe. Oh, yeah, yeah it's a, a whole new world. The 
the pop version of the Aladdin theme. Um, and then Ordinary World Duran Duran. The, the Return of Duran Duran. That was, that's a good album, good it's song. Good album. I, I, I do like song. I like Duran Duran. Another Whitney Houston song, I'm Every Woman. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, um, okay. I'm, yes. At first, when I looked at it at first, I couldn't from remember it. From The Bodyguard, it, but... also. That's from The Bodyguard? Right. Okay, whatever. No, I didn't know this one. Saving. Oh, right. I forgot. In that movie, she plays a pop star, so there's just a bunch of Whitney Houston yes. songs on there. So Saving <laughs> Forever for You, Shanice? I don't know who that is. I've heard Shanice. I'm pretty sure if we listen to that, we I'm will sure. recognize it. I'm sure. I don't want to listen um, to it. Arrested <laughs> Development, Mr. Wendo, and I, I like Arrested Development. Yes. I actually, six months after this, this date, I saw them at Lollapalooza in 1993. So Fucking teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> Prince and the new Power Generation, seven boys to men's on there. Uh, Hip hop, hooray, men. naughty, my nature. Yeah, baby. nothing but a G thing, Dr. Dre. So a lot of the early nineties. Bobby hip-hop. Brown. Oh, here's your snow informer. <laughs> my snow. That had been on the chart. Its peak position was fifteen. Was seven weeks, seven weeks on the chart. Yeah, but it was at twenty one now. Yeah, yeah. Or it's at fifteen now. This is so actually moving up its the peak. charts. It's getting better. Yep. It's at the peak at the point. I don't know what it gets. To. Rump shaker, uh, Rex in effect, bed of roses, Bon Jovi, and Vogue. Um, Bobby Brown's on a Rhythm couple. Rhythm is a dancer. Oh, Rhythm yeah. is a dancer. Yep. I mean, this is told the wet sprocket. Was I, in there. I, I would I would listen to the radio at this point and I'd be like, yeah, whatever. I'll listen to it. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Oh, two princes by the Spin Doctors. Oh, God, see that that's actually one of those ones that has held up. Yeah, that's a good song. I, I do. Like There's that a lot song. of good songs. There's a ton of good songs. All right, Whitney Houston. Who doesn't like I Will Always Love You? Okay. Yeah. So I'm uh, looking at there. We go to now. We went to, actually went to the. Second run theater, Roseville, Rose, the Roseville yes. Four, That's Roseville Four, with with its sticky sticky floors. Well, those exist; those theaters existing means we have a much wider span of movies. We yeah, can watch anytime we try. Right, right, right. So then we went there. So this was so we saw the first two movies we saw at the Roseville Four. So the first one was Toys. Now you've never seen this. I had never seen so, Toys. So this I is heard universally terrible things. Right, about right, right. So this is directed by Barry Levinson, who also co-wrote the screenplay. Now, Barry Levinson directed Rain Man. He won Best Director for that. He uh, directed Good Morning Vietnam, his first movie, Diner, The Natural, Young Sherlock Holmes. Young Sherlock um, Holmes is real fun. Yeah, yeah. Avalon was the movie he made right before this. I would like you to continue to name movies that I like more than I like this movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> toys. So, I saw this movie when I was 16, and I, I have slightly different opinions about now, but back, when I saw it back in 92, I was, you know, a different, unique person. Um, I but didn't, you still were bald. I did. No, you actually had no. Hair. I had long hair, <laughs> so I, 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 I didn't really fit in in high school. I got made fun of a lot, and this movie kind of spoke to me for its uniqueness and how different and and it's okay to be different. I'm sorry, Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your I, life must have been a miserable. I hell. actually saw this movie three times in the theater. Wow, and it's a rich, an wow. initial release. You are a psychopath. <laughs> so Toys is it's a it's kind of a hard movie to explain. It stars Robin Williams. It's a hard movie to watch. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Even the the production design. Come no, on. it's beautiful. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The positive. <laughs> this movie is gorgeous. Done. Okay. <laughs> so, Toys is a very whimsical film that it, it's about a toy factory, and the owner of the toy factory dies, played by Donald O'Connor. That's Donald. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was Donald. Yeah, that was Donald O'Connor right. as as Ron Williams. Dad. I saw him in the credits, and I'm like, Donald O'Connor's in this. Yeah, that was him with the beanie okay. on his and head. And then I'm like, oh, he's not in very long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he dies, passes away. Spoiler, yeah. no, spoiler to part of my review. Yeah. Um, he was annoying. Everybody in this fucking movie is super annoying to me. Aww. Every instant, I'm, everything everybody did, I'm like, God damn it, this is annoying. Okay, sorry. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so the toy owner dies of the uh, Zevo Toys, and he asks his brother, which kind of weird. I don't know exactly why he asks his brother, because that was a terrible idea. Y- you got laid? You like this movie, but you. <laughs> Yes. Wow. So <laughs> I, I was doing something wrong. <laughs> so um, Michael Gambon plays uh, General Zeo um, Leland. He is, you know, a military guy and totally the exact opposite of his goofball brother who owns the toy factory. His um, brother gave him and was like, that was like some stuff where it's like, oh, I'm going to give this to you because yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I could already see. This is just some elaborate bullshit plan so that his son ends yes. up with it. No, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So Ron Bellamy said, it, "Oh, he's not really ready for it yet." And and then Joan Cusack is is the is the his daughter. So that's uh, Ron Williams' sister. What happens is the general takes over, and of course 
he since he's military guy, he wants he finds out what there's leaks, so he puts the security system and he puts his son, um, which yeah, is Rob Williams' cousin. It's LL Cool J. Plays he finds out the there is yeah. such a thing as industrial espionage, in a toy, and he in gets toys. a full heart on. Yeah, okay? he gets so excited. It's like, oh, military ish. Yes. I love the military. Right. But now he wants to make <laughs> war toys, and they never made war toys because, as Robin Williams says, he thinks war domains the the domain of a small penis is uh what. So he's like, we never made war toys. But yeah, he does make other horrible toys that makes me want to scream and rage repeatedly. <laughs> well, the toys are kind of like the old timey wind up toys, and yes, stuff like yes. that, which is. But also, know, I mean, okay. But he also makes, like, hand buzzers and shit. Oh, yeah, the and, novelty stuff. And, and there's a scene in this yeah. where he's talking with his uncle, and he's, he offers him a, uh, what, the eggs or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, deviled eggs. And he, deviled, eggs. deviled eggs, that's what it was, deviled eggs. His uncle says yes, even though at every other instance in this movie, he would have not eaten in the middle of work. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, But yeah, now yeah. he's like, sure, and I'm like, you just broke your my immersion. Oh, wait, I had no immersion already. Okay, but then he's, like, annoying. And he, like, moves it around with a magnet. Yeah. And that scene goes on for what felt to me 20 fucking hours. Well, and... Of him <laughs> just being so Robin Williams well, annoying. Well, and, and that's I'm the like, thing. This is killing me. Well, because... <laughs> well, the thing with the movie is there was a script and a character, but the thing is Robin Williams kind of threw it away and just kind of improv through the movie yeah, pretty oh, much. So really? Yeah, wow, yeah, Wow, yeah. I, I couldn't tell. So, <laughs> but the movie is, is, is kind of, like... It's funny because it, you, you look at it. It's rated PG-13. It has kind of, like... You look at it and like, oh, is this a family kids movie? Not really. It's because it's not to really compare it to a movie that's super great, but Doctor Strangelove was this anti-war film, and it kind of has this kind of it, its ambitions. I think it's trying to do this. Oh, the, but instead, it's, it's a really ambitious film. I think. I'm not saying I, it succeeds. I'm saying it's ambitious. I, I I think it could be ambitious, but I honestly think, and I think this is a prop. This is my this yeah, is yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. that really okay. annoyed yeah, me yeah, yeah. was yeah because Robin Williams is amazing yeah Robin Williams. Fucking ruins this movie. Oh, I, I because don't think he's so. so fucking Robin Williams. Yeah, it, yeah. And he's doing his horrendous stand-up bullshit <laughs> every instant he's on the screen. Yeah, anytime, like, anytime he Jesus can do Christ, it. Jesus Christ, shut the fuck anytime up. Anytime he can play do a it. character, don't play Robin Williams. Right. Okay. Right. And, and there's some movies where he where he's improving through it, and there's some movies where he's playing a character. Yes. And, yeah. I mean, Aladdin. Well, we could have watched Aladdin. Well, he improved a bunch of that, but there is so, also stuff that he had to actually be. Right. The fucking genie. So Barry <laughs> Levinson directed Good Morning Vietnam, and all that movie he improvs a lot, but also plays a character. Yes. And also does a really good job. So yeah, no, but also that person he's improving is a Robin no. Williams stand-up Robin character. Robin Williams this, is he's supposed to be a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he just does he's annoying just shit. He's just Robin and I'm Like if you met this guy in the street, I'm like, I, I shut the fuck up, you <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Anyways, it goes through the end and where the, there's a confrontation because he doesn't want him to make war toys anymore. Yes. And, and what's kind of neat, too, there's this, there's this, uh, he eventually, what he does is his big plan is not making war toys, but making like little planes and tanks and stuff that have, le that are lethal that kids can control because they think it's a video game. They're controlling a remote yes. control. And he's going to have these kids go and actually go into, uh, but there's Two also this weird and... speech where he's like trying to say this will make the uh, defense yeah. of the country yeah. significantly cheaper. Yes. And then we can spend more money on like healing diseases and stuff. And I'm like, are you trying to sell me on this? Because you're kind of working. <laughs> this just kind of making sense. So this <laughs> is be the bad guy in this movie. <laughs> so, so this time when I watched it, like I said, I. I, I have had a really ad admiration for this film because I love the whimsical quality of the film at, when I was younger. I re it really spoke to me. It is amazingly beautiful. Yeah. There are so many things in this that look just so, so but the but the, the But this time when I watched it, I did... The flaws were kind of glaring to me. I still like it, and I still enjoy it. Um, but back then, I gave it four stars. Oh. It is not four stars now. No. It, no, I, I give it a three. I like it. Oh, it's a one. So And that's only because it's pretty. Okay, so let me talk about... I gotta talk about the production. The production design is so good in this movie. It is. Everything is built. When they go... When you see the, the assembly line factories of all the toys, I don't know how they... They have, like, like five or six huge, like, big sculptures of the toys. There's things in this that they... when you see it, you're like... In modern eyes, you're like, oh, they just did a bunch of CG. And I'm like, wait, 93? There's no fucking CG. No! They just 
made that shit. Okay? Yeah. And then the toy factory design of the toy factory looks great. Their house, that's which is a pop-up book. Yeah. I mean, that's so cool. I mean, it's cool. there are so many neat things that are so creative and so unique in this film. But just, you know, you just, could spend that money to heal that sick children. Okay? Just <laughs> the scene when they, when in the very beginning of the movie, when they go to, uh, go to uh, the president of the toy company's office, they have like a, a stairs that is on like, uh, like on wheels that goes over to the door. That is so cool. And everything is painted like a See, toy box. that was box. one of the ones that was Red, baffling. Yellow. I'm like, what, what happened? Why does the stairs move away from the door? Yeah, that yeah, door yeah, yeah. That door becomes useless garbage when that happens. <laughs> it's just a fucking stairway, you morons. Just leave the stairway but where it is. And everything's, yeah, but it looks cool. I love how everything's <laughs> colored like a toy box. It's all the primary colors, like red yes. and green and... There's and, that weird, yeah. weird uh, undulating walkway or oh, yeah, moves look, up and down. It looks and like a mini golf course. Yeah, but they like drive around in their... And then they park. have a duck crossing with toy ducks crossing. The, yeah, which I I'm like, it's... why is the military guy not completely enraged that he's I, trying to be at work? I thought he was going to run him over at one I point. Thought, yeah, I thought, this for doesn't, sure. they never even, it doesn't bother him one bit. No. I'm like, well, okay, a couple of the writing problems with this. Yeah. Okay? Um, he has a cousin. There's the cousin. LL Cool J yeah, yeah, yeah. is their cousin. Yeah. Okay? It's some type of joke. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, the cousin's a black guy. Okay, whatever. Okay? <laughs> they set up the stuff that LL Cool J has this super stealth ability. Yeah. He can be hiding and stuff. You get to the, the big climax. Um, he doesn't use that at any point <laughs> in the fucking climax. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It's Chekhov's gun, you moron! You can't put it in the movie and then not fucking use it. And then at the end of it, the big epilogue, he yeah. uses it again. I'm like, why couldn't you use that to save the day? Because he switches sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah, with, yeah. yeah the it general. was with the uncle, yeah, and then yeah. he switches sides because he finds out his uncle essentially got his mother killed. Yeah, but I'm also like, as a Jane I mean, Fonda look alike in reconnaissance. I don't know. That was funny. There me. was also this, like, I mean, yeah, he his father's been lying to him about how his mother died. Yeah, yeah he yeah. didn't lie that his mother wasn't dead or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, it isn't t- nearly as terrible as they're making it. He's his mother he died switches. Di- died yeah. in a like espionage thing. Yeah, but he doesn't tell his kid. I understand that's not great. It's not as bad as they're actually making it out to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. His mother's still dead. Yeah, his mother died. Yeah. Didn't die in a car accident. Has died in some other way. That's the only horrible crime he committed. There. So I, Robin, I can't, here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. I hate how much I'm on the bad guy side in this movie. <laughs> I will say this. So the best performance. He's the bad guy. I'm. I like Michael Gambon. Michael Gambon is awesome in this movie. I, I know you said everyone annoys you. I as General Zero, I loved him in this movie. He is great. Like he's. I, they, they all annoy me. Oh, he <laughs> like I loved his acting, and this is when I started re- really liking Michael Gambon. So then, when he was in other movies like Gosford Park, and then took over being Dumbledore, like he's Dumbledore in Harry Potter three. Oh no, he's eight. he's he's great. Here's the um, thing: this movie is filled with people that I actively know yeah, are amazing. Yeah, and then in this movie, they just fucking suck. <laughs> okay, okay. Ella Kuja is actually pretty good in this. I, I like think he's good. Acting role, I, I think, like Joan something. Cusack in the movie. She's, she's okay. She's okay. She ends up being a robot she, and stuff. So it, she, it's just pretty so much kind of tries to explain why she was that way. Yeah. I'm like, can you explain why Robin Williams is this way? So no, jo- he's just a monster. Well, Joan Cusack, <laughs> I think her performance is almost like the director said, okay. Act like Drew Barrymore in E.T. Like, it was just like, she kind of acts act, just act like a three? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Because she kind of is. Well, I and I like it when uh, the costumes are great in this too, because she wears clip-on clothing, like large clip-on yes. clothing with like and the plastic hair. she designs hair. the doll's clothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least yeah. until What's-His-Face cancels it. Right, right, uh, right. Whatever. I really like the whimsical quality of the film, and it's and it's loaded with some good music. I like, I love the opening with the, with the Christmas music and the, and it's, I, 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 I love that stuff. Talk, I can't I can't deny that the movie is gorgeous. I just fucking hate it. Oh, we gotta talk about Robin <laughs> Wright's in there from Princess Bride. Yes. Who, this was her first movie she did post nose job. Oh, that's I think. right. Because she had this, a nose job. Oh, okay. Oh, that's yeah. why I didn't I knew who Robin Wright was, and I'm like, that's Robin And then Wright. she did uh, Forrest Gump right she after this. Look super okay. Here's the thing. Um, that also has the romance plot. Yeah. Um, Hollywood has to throw a yeah, yeah, romance yeah. plot in there. Because I want to get laid. Jesus what he Christ. Does? Yeah, he even says that. And I'm like, you couldn't, you know, edit that out of the fucking movie, you morons. But he had the, that he had the doesn't double work. Puppet. That you was can't funny to me. Drive up on a woman and then, because she was like biking and he's like in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he offers to give her a ride. And he, she, she said, says, why? She says no. 
She says she doesn't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And he just keeps pressuring her until he's done. Like, fuck you, Robin Williams. <laughs> you are a garbage human being. Um, I hate that in movies. <laughs> I also got to talk. Um, it is a small cameo. I love Jack Warden. <laughs> Jack Warden shows up as the old General Zemo, oh. who looks like an animatronic. I don't know oh, how he they, does. He does. But he, he doesn't shows look up real. How, that, old, how old actually was he? Um, yes. I'm going to say he was 70, maybe. But God, he looks like he's 912 years he old. Was he was 70. He didn't die until fucking 20 years later, 25 yeah, years later. He was 72. But oh, they made him look like he was 100 years oh, old. Oh, I mean, I think he was infinite. He was he was immortal. But he old. was, <laughs> he's, uh plays um the grandfather, the, but he's military, just like Michael Gambit. Yeah. And, the first scene when he, he's asking him, like, Dad, should I take over Zevo Toys? You can't understand anything he says. And it's to me, I thought that was funny. He's just like, I, I don't think- know. But my guess was like, you know what? When I, In Vietnam one time, one of my men tried to frag me. And he goes like, ah, big cock. No, frag me. <laughs> that was funny to me. Like, I don't know. I mean, here's That's- the thing. By the time any of that stuff has gotten yeah, 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 through, yeah. I'm already so annoyed by everybody. Okay, I'm just okay. like, this is one of the things in me. Yeah. And if I'm getting rubbed the wrong way. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try, but boy, I'm you, not going to have an easy time yeah, writing stuff yeah, in this yeah. that maybe would be cool, so, but god damn, I hate it. It's really, it's overly ambitious. It doesn't necessarily work all the time as, as a whole story, but as an experience for me, I love the whimsical quality. I love the imagination of the film, and that won me over. So I, I, still, I still have a fondness for it, and a lot of it, I will admit, is nostalgic, is nostalgia for me. Um, because, I but, but I, but so I don't like it as much as I used to, but I still enjoy it and I do give it a three and I, and I like it a lot. I understand. Yeah. If I saw the black hole, I would have certain nostalgia, but that movie's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with you. No, I have nostalgia for it too, but I rewatched it. And I'm like, this is really boring. It's, it is. It's, I was just annoyed right off the bat. Of, <laughs> of black hole. Whenever, whenever, yeah. no, of, of oh, toys. this one. I, oh, but I haven't, I haven't, I've actively avoided watching black hole. It's kind of boring. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the floating robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah, but me no, too. I'm sure it's terrible. <laughs> All right. So our next movie is The Distinguished Gentleman. Neither of us have seen this before. Nope. I um, didn't. And I, I'm not sure I knew it existed. Although having looked at the poster, I'm like, oh, I guess I've seen yeah. the poster. I think the day after Christmas in 1992, me and my family went to Mall of America and they have a movie theater there and me and my brother saw Muppet Treasure or Muppet Christmas Carol and then my mom went to go see this movie and I think she was like yeah it was good you know I mean I don't think she said much about it it's Robin Will- it's not Robin Eddie Murphy. Murphy I'm sorry it's Eddie Murphy <laughs> it's, it is a very Eddie Murphy movie yeah so Eddie Murphy and, and I'm how are you with Eddie Murphy are you a fan of, of his stuff I mean is Eddie Murphy uh, I can like him I can yeah. sometimes not like him it depends so, at this point in his career, Eddie Murphy was, you know, he's still a pretty huge superstar. He was recovering from Harlem Nights. Okay. Um, Harlem Nights was a huge flop in 89. Which is that, odd, because I kinda... guarantee Harlem Nights is a better movie than this. Because it's Harlem Nights. I mean, maybe, maybe. I would maybe I would just be like, Here, I've never seen Harlem Nights either. Oh, you haven't? So we'll travel through time so he, off Yeah. Of so it was direct, that was directed by Eddie Murphy, the only movie he directed. Was oh, maybe, that, maybe it isn't very good. Then. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, his ego might have gotten a little bit on And then he hand. did another 48 Hours, which wasn't very good. That's just a sequel. Um, oh, speaking of Nick Nolte, we're going to talk about yeah. him Yeah. <laughs> so, but he first started, this was his 10th film. As as a uh, as a um, this is, star. It, oh, really? This was his tenth. Yeah. So he did Forty Eight Hours, which I love. That is that the first one he started? Yes. Forty Eight Hours. Beverly Hills Cop. Then Trading Places. Trading Places was after Forty Eight Be- Hours. Then Beverly Hills wow. Cop. Best defense. He has the little cameo in it. He's you know. But boy, he's on the he'll, he he's on the poster. Yeah. He, he might as well be a star because well, that's how they got people in theaters. Well, that's well <laughs> they well, he was an afterthought. They threw him on after the movie was done. They're like, oh, well, let's put him in the movie, and it's it's bad. Anyways, on um, the Golden Child, um, coming to America, Beverly Hills Cop two. Um, it's just like any other movie star, though. There are hit, there are the hits and misses. Golden right. Child, nobody thinks about. I. It's okay. I, I saw it when he, I was younger. He's awesome. In yeah, it. Like, he's, he's fine. In it. He's good. In his it. improv nobody, in that movie nobody, is great. Nobody, nobody brings it up when they talk about Eddie Murphy. No, no. Okay? Nobody but, brings this up either. No, 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 okay. no. Coming to America um, is, a, I think, a really, really good movie. Oh, yeah. It holds up really well, I think. So, yeah, but this one, so he, right before he did this, he did Boomerang. And that was kind of a comeback because that was actually a hit. Boomerang was good. Yeah, so that was a hit. So then he was kind of riding off of that now because this was, because Harlem Nights was a flop and now. Boomerang kind of brought him back up, and now this was his follow-up to that movie. And this is directed by Jonathan Lynn, who earlier this year came out with My Cousin Vinny, the director, did that. 
Oh, wait, what? The director of this what? did My Cousin Vinny. That's Jonathan like Wynn. the third best movie in world history. <laughs> my Cousin Vinny. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joe, Joe Pesci's great in it. Mar- Marissa Tomei. Wow. Um, wow, I want to like this movie more. <laughs> yeah. Good, whatever. What, what is, so this is a political comedy. So Eddie Murphy plays Thomas Jefferson Johnson, who is a con man. And the movie starts off with him conning this guy who is a, a kind of a... a political influencer um a guy who like funds stuff yes because he yeah he, he's not an actual political person but he funds he's things. a uh whatever he is. investor so you know he runs kind of like a fake phone sex operation where you know he'll catch people and then he'll like blackmail them They're like i'm gonna show you that you're you know, i'm gonna yeah. tell your wife about it well but he is he doesn't show up and say i'm blackmailing you he it's a full con he acts like he's like part of the fbi or yeah something. i'm the, the vice squad and yeah, yeah he's yeah, going yeah. to arrest yeah. this yep. woman who yep. was going to yep. blackmail yep. but then in order but you're still going to get essentially blackmailed by me right. okay <laughs> because you don't want to go to trial because then everybody's going to know about this thing that happened right. and blah 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 it's actually interesting Really interesting premise for this. Movie. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and James Garner, he's I mean, he's, you know, he's only the beginning, but, but actually, that's part of the interesting premise. That's how he gets. Yeah, in so, this movie, the Eddie Murphy character of Tom Jeff, Jefferson Jeff Johnson, whatever, whatever yeah. Johnson. That's right. His name is Johnson. <laughs> well, Jeff Johnson is, is is James Garner, and so he is political. He dies during sex, heart attack. James Garner in a sex scene. That was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was... Um, He's banging his like a, a Secretary or yeah. assistant. Yeah. So anyways, he has a heart attack and he overhears... Eddie Murphy overhears like, wow, I'm in the wrong business. I should be getting doing being a politician and doing graft. Well, he gets this idea of using name recognition of Jeff Johnson and using his middle name, Jeff Jefferson, to be Jeff Johnson, to run... For uh, Congress to be a congressman to get um, yeah. be on the chair, which in, in I'm the like, since he does, and he's a con. The, this the is the Jeff ultimate Johnson con. Character died very shortly before the election. Yeah, and he was so he was not going to be on the ballot anymore. Yeah, but if you just put your name on there as Jeff Johnson, but apparently don't put a party affiliation because yeah. his party was like uh, the Silver Foxes or whatever. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so he, he just gets in, which I'm like, that legit might work. So, yeah, so he gets in. He's loving it. He's he's getting some money. But then he um, meets um, uh, a lawyer or something played by who's the, the, was the girl. Was she a lawyer? I thought she was just the that girl's mother. No, 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 no not that. No, no, no. She's, oh, oh, the the love interest. The love interest is what oh, I'm talking about. Yeah. Movie, I just have to throw love yeah, <laughs> that was kind of so. They throw the love interest in, and as he's conning people and stuff like that, he ends up well. He becomes friends with Dick Dodge, played by Lane Smith, and he's kind of for it was a power and industry or whatever was the was the committee to that yes. he was on. And one of the best scenes in this, yeah, is when Eddie Murphy was having a meeting, I think, with that yeah, guy, yeah. and he's asking him what side of each issue he's on, and, and he doesn't know, and he goes, well, if you're on this side, I'll get your money from them. If you're on this side, I'll get your money yeah, from yeah, them. Yeah. And he just randomly picks sides, and he's just like, cool, money, okay? Yeah. He just doesn't give a shit. Right. I'm like, this movie, eh, it's got, its, it's, got right. its pluses. So then what happens is this little girl and her mom come to the office, and they want to speak to the congressman, and you find out this girl has cancer because her, they have like a struggle and her wig falls off or whatever. Yeah. And so he's like, well, what's going on? So like there's there's power lines. And then it becomes kind of like almost a message movie. And uh, it kind of switches gears a little bit. It does. To, it's a little harsh that this guy who in real life, actual con men, yeah. find out about little dying girls. They just try to figure a way to make money from it. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. And in this, they, they find a little dying girl and they're going right. like, hmm. Let's, uh, I'm going to suddenly be a nice person. And I'm like, no, we all know you're terrible. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Eddie Murphy in this movie, I like Eddie Murphy and he's still likable in this film. He's, he's, he's fun. He's a, he, he, he does the Eddie Murphy. He does. Both it's, voices it's, it's not as, like it's that. not as crazy. It's a, I would say a tad watered down Eddie Murphy. It's yes. not crazy Eddie Murphy that you've seen like in Beverly Hills Cop and yeah, and coming he, to America. He uses the extra voices here and there. Yeah, and well, he, and he a, does the Jewish, is, white Jewish guy, yeah, and, the, and then the white voice. Thing. No, okay, <laughs> but he does the white voice like, okay, guys, and you know, and yeah, like, he'll, he'll talk on the phone, and he'll just be like, hello, and then even he'll even be like the Swedish uh, sex phone operator, like, oh, hello, you know, like that. Was, yeah, that's right. So it was kind of neat mean, to see him. He's 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 Eddie Murphy in it. Yeah, and Eddie Murphy. He's a talented motherfucker. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, he's good. He's good. My my issue with the movie. So I actually 
I th- the first half for me was better than the second half. Me too. So the first Weirdly, half, really, when it turns into a movie where you're supposed to start giving a shit, I stopped giving a me shit. Me too. <laughs> it well because it to me it it didn't come naturally. It felt forced. It was like I didn't buy that his character would do that. that no. And and now I'm going to <laughs> bring up another movie that you hated. We're going back to Let It Ride. Okay. That I have. I love talking about Let It Ride. Okay. I like screaming. So in that movie, <laughs> that guy is kind of conning and gambling and he yes. doesn't change he doesn't change if, you're right it was like if that movie had a scene where all of a sudden he switched and came over i wouldn't have liked that but, but here's the thing in let it ride he you, owned up to it and it yes, stayed that way the whole you're movie. supposed to not think of him as a bad person you're supposed to be rooting for him in this you're just supposed to be watching a con man at work. See, that's what if I kind of felt. Dirty Mountain Scoundrels. Yeah, those are just yeah. con men yeah. at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never convert. You're just enjoying it because they're bad people, and you're just. That's kind of like, how I felt about Let It Ride, though. That's how I felt about Let It Ride. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> so um, I would. That's fine. why I would take this over. Over this, that over this oh, movie. No, I'm, for me, this is a better movie than Let It Ride. No, I like no, I like Let It Ride better because I know you it do, didn't. Because you're a terrible human being, it, Austin Kennedy. <laughs> because it didn't, it didn't pander the audience. It didn't. Yes. Th- okay, I, I'll give you that. Okay, this movie attempts to convert you to his to being fully Eddie Murphy, and I'm yeah. like, wait, you do know he got his office through complete bullshittery, okay? <laughs> Yeah, so it it it, it kind of contradicts itself. Nobody actually voted for the, the Eddie yeah. Murphy character no. in this movie. Okay? No, it kind of it kind of contradicts <laughs> itself. And then you got the Charles Dutton characters in there as as the the, the father, and that that, that was kind of shoehorned. He's the preacher, the the father. Oh yeah, okay. Was, I like Charles S. Dutton. Here's the thing: he's great. There, some of the side characters, his like crew, his like sister, I wish cousin. They were, because I, I wish they were. More she's, fleshed out. She's the, the Latino the, guy. And, yeah, the, yeah. The woman who plays his sister yeah. is on Abbott Elementary now. Oh, okay. Interesting. And Abbott Elementary is a really cool show. Okay. It's really good. Yeah. But obviously, she's 30 years older. She's yeah, not yeah, playing yeah. that character anymore. <laughs> 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 but no. And when I saw her, I'm like, holy shit, I know her. I like her because she's yeah. cool in that. And I'm like, okay. So maybe that was one of the things that I'm like, oh, cool. I get to watch yeah. her and do, a, do a thing in a movie. So maybe that's why I'm like, I mean, she was like, good in the movie. This movies. movie isn't terrible. No, no, it's it not. It just isn't. Good. It's mediocre. It's mediocre. It's a two. I give it but a two it is, out of four. It is kind of the first of two movies in this, where once you you they talk about certain medical things in this. Okay? Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. And if yeah, you yeah, do yeah, research yeah, yeah. on it, you're like, oh, that's just bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no, I this it's a two stars. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen. The first half was two, enjoyable. I'll give, it, I'll give it a solid two. Yeah, two, it was, two is it was, accurate. Two out of four. It stars. has, and I think you're right. Weirdly, the first half of this movie. Because he's just a con guy, and you're just watching a con guy at work. That's fine. You're not. I didn't buy to the like romance. Him. I didn't There's buy a, him transforming. Yes, the I didn't romance buy any annoys of that. me, and, and I'm like, uh, yeah. I don't want him to have a romance. No, because that's one of my problems with Let It Ride. Is he's married? Yeah, <laughs> I like his wife because she's Terry not Gar. a terrible person, yeah. but she's a full victim in that movie. Absolutely. In yeah. this. He gets a love interest, and I'm like, she's a fucking victim now, okay? Right, but then he completely turns around unbelievably. Oh, yeah, which... and then the last scene is, I'm going to run for president. president. Freeze like, frame. Fuck you. And he, way, and he breaks the fourth wall. By the way, he breaks the the way fourth this wall. is 93 Eddie Murphy. You're not a fucking old enough to run for president, okay? <laughs> You're like yeah, 33 he was, three years old, okay? He was, yeah, he was 31 in this movie. Yeah. God damn, he's he not old enough. Yeah. I mean, granted, you can't, you're not going to probably run later that year. Yeah, yeah, You're going to take a few years, but still. Yeah. wait, wait. This is the Obama origin story. We need to it out. <laughs> so, distinguished <laughs> gentlemen, that's this is why we don't talk about this movie because it's just that's, no that's nobody talks nobody. about it because I did bring up that I was going to be watching it with uh at this we were recording this shortly yeah. after Christmas. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. far distant future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Christmas, I brought up some of the movies I was being watching yeah. for this when we travel through time. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and I brought this up, and he goes, "Oh, I've seen that. Is that very good?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I didn't expect to be very good. Never heard some Eddie Murphy movie. Never heard about. It. It's also <laughs> not going to be bad enough to be enjoyable, like the Eddie Murphy that are movies that are bad enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, I've yeah. heard about them. Yeah, those like might Pluto be enjoyable. Mash yeah, or those something. might be enjoyable. I mean, I've never seen Pluto Nash. You know. One really bad one though that I give <laughs> zero stars to is Meet Dave. I didn't like. I have not seen oh, Meet Dave either because that's a, one of the two it's, it's that are apparently the in worst things any movie's ever yeah. done. Okay. Actually, I Spy was really bad with Owen Wilson. I think it's just a remake that thing, though. Really it's just bad. a movie. 
Okay. You know Did you ever mean? see it? I haven't seen it's it. It's bad. It's one that I'm, is it really bad? It's is really it just bad. just because Owen Wilson and Eddie Murphy are just Owen Wilson it's and just, Eddie Murphy in that movie? There is just <laughs> nothing good. I and mean, it's just, it's so, it's, it's, I think it's worse than bad. It's boring. It's so boring oh, and not nothing good. happens. That's, and it's just, that is weirdly, in some ways, a one and a half star movie is worse, worse than, than a zero, zero star, star movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a zero star movie is yeah. so terrible, you might I enjoy think so too. the rage it has given you. <laughs> so, now we we switched over to Pavilion Place to go, uh, which is not that far from Roseville. Mm-hmm. Pavilion Place was the... just imagine if we lived in Chicago, we would have so many, <laughs> or L.A. or New York, Fuck or... L.A. But Chicago is big enough that yeah, it has yeah. cool, crazy theaters. Pavilion cause... Place is a cool the- was a cool. I mean, we have plenty though. of theaters here. We yeah. have a lot of drive-ins yeah. in the summer. Yes, but not in February. <laughs> right. We only have well, I, how many drive-ins now? Or just oh, like, like two. one or two? Yeah, two. Yeah. I think and I think one of them kind of reopened during pandemic okay. and then kind of now went away again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So our third movie we went to the place to go see Matinee, and I saw this movie a long time ago. I had, so I, I knew about Matinee, yeah. but I had never seen it. So this is you knew about Matt. I knew about Matt. Yeah. So 1993, this is starring John Goodman, directed by Joe Dante. Joe Dante started off working for Roger Corman, doing like Piranha Hollywood Boulevard. Then he did The Howling, but then he blew up doing Gremlins. He did Gremlins. He did Explorers, which is okay. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe I was r- the right age. I Explorers? I really loved Explorers. Yeah, I liked it as a kid. I don't. It doesn't hold up. I was I like a full teenager. Yeah, right. He, um, and then he directed Inner Space, which I love Inner Space. I tried to watch that recently. I oh, it's not as good like anymore? Uh, okay. I loved it back then. And The Burbs? The, I have. I want to see the Burbs. I don't think I've You've seen it. You've never seen it. Oh, Maybe yeah. I've seen. I'm an old man. Yeah. I don't. I remember everything I've seen 35 years ago, Austin. And okay? what I think is a really underrated movie that he did is Gremlins 2: The New Batch. I think that's not underrated. It that's is. the greatest film in it's American so good. history. No, but I think it's not. You know, people don't talk about it as much as the first yes. Gremlins. But I love that, Gremlins well, 2. When it's they talk so about it, they try to rip on it, and I'm like, you're fucking wrong. Oh, Gremlins 2 is perfect. But you can't rip on it because it already rips on itself. Yes, it's you so can't. great. Gremlins 2 knows that it's a oh, Shitty sequel, and they're going shitty sequel oh, it's all the way. So good, I like Gremlins <laughs> too. I think it's one of Joe Dante's best films. Anyways, yeah. he he didn't direct a whole lot of movies in the nineties. I think he did that, and then he did um he did what this movie, and then he did Small Soldiers after this, which was weird. Oh wow, yeah. God, that's he that's weird because this movie is fucking gold. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert: this movie's awesome. Um, man, they, so yeah, and it's funny. No one talks about this movie. No, and, they and really should. They really should. I, also, this is a movie that needs to be uh, rediscovered. The, the other well, only, the only other thing they also should talk about is I just want to fucking watch Mant. Okay. <laughs> well, the thing about this movie, it wasn't. It didn't do good. Well, we even, haven't given this an No, no. I'm but we can talk about Matt. No, nobody no, knows what the fuck we're talking it, about. It okay? didn't. It didn't do good when it came out. So no That's, one saw it when it came this, out. This. So I was gonna say it should be rediscovered, but it wasn't even discovered in the first this place. Episode is the bombs episode, yeah. except for Sniper, which is kind of a hit. It, well, it was enough to warrant made-for-video sequels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but um, that doesn't mean much. <laughs> oh, so yeah, Matinee is is, is, is so it takes place in 1962. Right during the Cuba uh, Missile Crisis. Yes. And it even I did had... not know that. Yeah. I knew it was about movie, I, Matt, Matt thing. I didn't know, but it I, starts right out, and I'm like, oh, shit. When I was trying to remember it, I serious. thought it was in the 50s, but no, it was 1962. But uh, John Goodman plays a... It a opens gl- with a fun trailer for Matt. Matt, which is a black and white, like, B movie that you would see from, like... 1962. Yeah. from Well, you would see, it like, Roger, either Roger Corman or William Castle, who's... John Goodman is based off his character is based off of William Castle, who produced. Um, but uh, shaped House, like Alfred Hitchcock. Well, he, yeah, right. But he did. <laughs> but he did House on Haunted Hill and The Tingler and and all these movies that that he, like putting the buzzers under the seats. That's what William Castle yeah. would do that. And so that's based off of that. But yeah, you see this trailer of Matt, and it it's it, and it shows John Goodman is like, hello, I'm what's his name, Woosley. I'm Lawrence Woosley. Kind of like how Alfred Hitchcock was in his trailer. So that was kind of paying homage yep. to that. Then it cuts to people watching it in the theaters, and actually he talks the, about like the atomic, the atomic bomb, right? Yeah. But the movie is actually not about John Goodman. It's actually a coming of age story w- about a group of kids, yep. um, mainly this focused movie on this has love interest. But it makes sense because right. the kids and there's yeah, yeah, yeah. Meet, oh, meet, absolutely, meet, and the kids so, are characters. Yeah, unlike other ones where absolutely. the people with love interests aren't fucking. Characters. Oh, absolutely. Um, Gene, I'm played by um Simon Fenton in this movie. He's like a you know middle school kid. He they live on um the military base 
because his dad's in the military. He is trying to fit in, doesn't really fit in. But then once his, uh, these kids think that, you know, know that he's on the military base, they want to know what's going on with the Cuban Missile Crisis and stuff. So they're like, hey, what's oh, your dad's on a ship? Oh, cool. You know, they want to know what's going on. And then they also think he's, it's cool that he knows a lot about monster movies. He's obsessed with monster films and like, and he has all the, mon- you see like monster magazines that they probably, for the, like the prop person for the movie probably got to get all the old yeah. movie stuff with well, like, that's cause with like Christopher Lee on the cover. And he kind of uses those movies to torture his brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, I think he genuinely likes them though. He, oh, he, yeah. he has an interest. He's a yeah. love for those movies. Yeah. And, and, and uh, yeah, I think it's great. And, but, it, but then of course, you know, it's coming of age story. So they see girls they are like, Ooh, we got to ask him on the date to go to the movies. And then, so one of the other friends wants to ask this one girl played by Kelly Martin, who was in the show, God, what was the show with uh Hogan Corky? Family? No, with Corky. Oh, bloody. Oh, life goes on. Life goes on. It was the life goes on. Okay. Yeah. So it's Kelly Martin. She plays that main love interest of of the, the other kid, not Gene. Um, the other um Gene's other love interest, the the girl that's kind of like the the one that was uh, protesting for the bomb shelter when they were doing the bomb yes. raids, the duck and cover. She was on um the Mrs. Doubtfire. She was the Robin Williams' daughter. Okay. In that. Okay. Oh, yeah. she was. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 I'm like, I know a bunch of these, but they're kids, and I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so there's that scene. Let's talk about that scene. At one point, yeah. there is a bomb uh, drill. Yeah. And they're duck and cover. Yep. Okay? And she's, like, ranting and raving how this wouldn't do anything. Yeah. We're all dead anyway. And I'm like, I think this might play differently now. She's kind of carrying this. Okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's kind of anti-masking it. And I'm like, I understand in reality it doesn't do anything. But nothing's gonna do anything. Right, it's a right. fucking bomb. At least give you <laughs> false hope is the only hope you're gonna get. Right, okay? right, right. But she was a nonconformist at the time. Yes, and so that's I think what that's what it was trying in, to in do. In the movie, she's actually I mean she's not a hero, she's just another character. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. John Goodman's character is bringing his movie Mant to this town, to Key West, it's to like preview pre- it. It's, it's a, a preview. preview screening. Yeah. So, the, so in Key West, and there's another producer coming who could possibly buy up the film to see how it plays, how it previews yep. with the audience, to see the the reactions of it. And we find out that John Goodman, who with Kat, his uh, girlfriend played by Kathy Moriarty, who's always leading st- lady as well. Kathy Moriarty was also in Raging Bull. She was uh, the love interest in that. Who's got the lowest voice I've ever heard on a woman? Um. Kathy Moriarty. Yeah. So, so, you, you, you mean she hot? smokes? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> she, she, oh, she looks great, but she, but she, but she, but she I mean, sounds like voice. she's had a lot of she had a sexy se- voice, though. I a lot of cigarettes in yes. the voice. But anyways, oh, God, I loved. Let's just say because she's the nurse oh, she, during the. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, we'll I get just, into that. Yeah, yeah. The way I do things, people. You just talk okay? out of order. I talk out of order. You're out of order. Okay. I'm out of order. But in the screening, which you're about to talk about, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she plays. We're now talking about. Yeah, yeah. She's the nurse. Because you have to sign a form in case you're going to have, have a, a heart attack during the movie. Yeah. But she was it's all some ten year olds have heart attacks. They they recover fine. <laughs> She's like they're well, not going to die. But you still have, to, have sign. to sign this thing. And then another kid shows up. Hey nurse, I hurt my arm. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, oh, she goes. He goes. I, I I cut my arm and it looks pretty bad. And she's like, like that looks terrible. Next. <laughs> that was so funny. That was that was really good. Yeah, yeah, it was great. But anyways, well, he's bringing the movie there to preview. So the whole whole thing's leading up to this because Gene, the kid, wants to bring his little brother. And I'm like, oh, we got to go see Mant. And oh, let's get. Oh, we're God, trying to get man. dates for the thing, oh, but then there's another subplot of Kelly Martin's ex boyfriend. Oh yeah, is an older guy out of high school dating a middle schooler. That's kind of I don't creepy. think she's middle school. Well, I could. Maybe. I can't tell ages. We're yeah, old yeah, men. yeah, yeah. But anyways, so yeah, there, so he's kind of like a like a beatnik kind of you know like greaser whatever. Yes, and but, but he writes poems. Yeah, and you you finally get to hear like one poem and I'm like that's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> But so he's really jealous, like stalking her. And he, so he, you know, goes to the kid and he's like, "If you take her out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you," you know, kind of thing. So there's this whole drama of like he stands her up, but he's just scared or whatever. And then she gets mad when she finds yeah, out. Yeah, he makes up some other thing. But then what happens is he, uh, they're all at the movie, but and the ex boyfriend gets hired by John Goodman's character to uh, dress up as the man to pop out during the screening of the movie. So there's there's a funny yes. scene of that because one. His girl, his ex girlfriend, and the new kid are making out, and he sees that he genuinely starts attacking them. He does. Yeah, he start, he's he's the mantis attacking them. And there's oh, a lot God, of different characters fun. in the film too. The, the uh, weird characters, like you got um, 
Robert Picardo, who's in a lot of Joe Dante films, who um, he plays the oh, theater manager. Because Robert Picardo's amazing. Oh, yeah. He's just he's good the, in everything he's in. He's the theater manager in this, and he's, you know, worried that the bombs are going to come, so he's this bomb shelter in the theater. It's in the theater. Because does he great. live in the theater? I yeah. don't know. Why is the bomb shelter in the theater? And then, because you're there every day, I guess. And then you've got <laughs> um, two people that work for uh, John Goodman's character, and they're, they're kind of like help promoting the film, but they're also actors, played by Dick Miller. Dick Miller's, you know, like he's Mr. Futterman and Gremlins. Yep. And the other guy is writer director John Sayles, who directed like The Secret of Rona Nish and Lone Star. And he's he's done all these like he's a very independent uh, um, filmmaker that he started in 1980. But I think it's funny that he's in this movie as as an actor. They're so great. That, that was, but yeah, they're really funny they're together. Because um, because the the thug the yeah. greaser yeah yeah yeah, yeah. seem to have been greasy yeah. hair but yeah 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 greaser okay Beat yeah Nick. he pickpockets them yeah but they they knew the whole time yeah <laughs> they immediately mug him and get their get their stuff back and they are legit intimidating scary and uh, they're like, great in the movie oh my yeah good. those guys are awesome <laughs> um yeah and and then there's also a little relationship between um gene the the main kid and uh john goodman and they you know yes. kind of like because he's just like hey i saw those that, that's those actors that you had earlier doing like this protest thing. That's that's not real protest. That was the actors that yeah. you hired. And he's like, and at first he's trying to bullshit and was like, no, that uh, worked for me. <laughs> and he's just like, okay, I'm okay, no, whatever. I, I'm not gonna try to he, fool he like, you. He, it's like one sentence and he's like, he just gives up and goes, oh, whatever. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I but then he's him. like, well, come <laughs> and help. Well, he's like, why don't you come <laughs> in and help me? And so he he helps him like set up the the seats and stuff. And yeah, and he so puts, he's putting buzzers in the seats. Uh, so there's a lot of things. Eventually, this, you show like there's a lot of little things that are set up in this theater. Yeah, and and it's, they get the rumble rama, and then it goes to this big climax where at the end of the movie when everything's getting crazy in the movie, when there's a giant ant destroying cities and stuff and the rumble seats are going, well, the, the, the person that was running it, the, 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 the greaser, he put up the rumble way too high and made the balcony shake so much that the balcony is actually giving loose. So there's a legitimate adventure, actual adventure scene in the movie where they're trying to get everyone out of the theater to protect them from Mm -hmm. the, from the uh, balcony. That balcony is shitty. Okay, <laughs> it's a shitty balcony. Yeah, let's get into the movie. Yeah, I this movie's really good. It's like a mini masterpiece. Almost, oh, it right? really is. Like, there's it, nothing in this movie that I'm like. It is uh, this so. Movie works in every it way. is so fun, and they capture the time period so well. Mm-hmm. Um, in the 1960s, the movie within the movie, man, is fantastic. Um, so good. Oh, they did it yes. so well. They did. It's so funny they did. when you get to see the little bit of the movie, man. Oh, on it the is screen, so good, and I'm like. Oh God! There, it's this movie. Is this movie is? The, I liked the characters. Yeah, I liked what was happening? Yeah, I liked the humor. There's not a single joke in this that falls flat. They're oh. all fucking gut bursting awesome. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's this it's really movie, funny. John Goodman is great in the film, and he was at peak at this point. He just did Barton Fink a couple of years ago, which I love oh, Barton yeah. Fink, and uh, and of course he was on Roseanne very, very you know um, prominently yeah. during this period. And yeah, he's terrific in the film. The kids are all really good. Yep. Kathy Moriarty is great, like you said. Um, Robert Ricardo, everybody's good in the movie. Oh, I got to talk about the that movie. Um, <laughs> where there, there's another double feature that was playing before the movie, and they go to see it, and it was like this family movie oh. about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> What's the name of the movie? What, I got to find the name of the movie. Hold on. I wrote it in my notes. I wrote it in my notes. What's it called? It's like. My mother in the car, but it's like so. It's like a shopping. It's cart. a shopping it's so cart. Weird. It's a shopping cart that they become friends with, and they're like, "What is the name of it?" I wrote it down, and I can't find it. And the and the kids are hating it. I'm like, "Oh, why do these kids not love this movie? The movie's awesome." It's a it's like a shopping cart pet. Shook up shopping cart. Was that, the that's name. what the name that was. That was the name oh, of the movie. Because because one of the mothers says, "Take your brother to go see the movies." But this movie is blah blah blah. It's like whatever, just go see it. Yeah, they hate it, and I'm like, they walked they out of it. They movie. walked out of it. Yeah, that little bit I saw that movie looks fucking amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it looks so much fun. Like they're getting mugged or something, and then the shopping cart like comes <laughs> and 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 and, 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 so. and saves them and like hits the thugs, <laughs> and then it's like it's like moving around like it's talking to them. The oh shopping god, cart. it's so funny. It was so funny I'm like, that I they. I want to see these movies. That was a really funny with a movie within a movie, and it's really well done. Jerry Goldsmith, who worked with uh, Joel Dante in pretty much all of his movies does a great score um oh. the music is fantastic mm-hmm. in the movie so good 
See, we're crying laughing just thinking about oh, it. Oh, God, really it's good. so fun. It's good. My, this movie's amazing. If there was any flaw in the movie, it's, and this is, I'm nitpicking. The last shot of the movie is weird because I remember at the very end of the movie, you know, like John Goodman drives off. He's like, thanks, kid, for the help. And, you know, drives off. And then the, the couple, the, the kid and his new girlfriend or whatever, are walking on the beach. And then there's, you see, like, the army helicopter well, going by. Well, they're right next to an airbase. Right, 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 right. It's right. not a big deal. But instead of <laughs> the last shot being them, again, I'm nitpicking. The, instead of the last shot being them walking on the beach, then it cuts to a close-up of the helicopter. Just, you know. And that was, and then it goes uh, to the credits. I why did they? Why was that the last I shot? Think it's and not the it's kids in the sunset. I don't know. And there's still this, you know, atomic war problem. Okay, <laughs> but that was my know, only thing. Bother. But, but it's a, uh, I it's is an easy three and a half out of oh, four, it was stars a four stars. Star. Four stars. One of my four favorite okay. movies I've ever fucking sat down. <laughs> but it's it's it. a it's a strong three and a so half. There's a very couple of things I want to talk about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have seen the room. At a midnight showing in Chicago, mm -hmm. which is similar. I mean, it doesn't have rumble seats or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it has the full spectacle of people doing stuff. Yeah. And you have spoons and stuff. Have you That's ever fun. seen the room in the I've seen, Not in the theater, but yeah. Like, but you got pla you got these plastic spoons, whatever, there's spoons on the screen. Because there's just, <laughs> that movie's nuts. It doesn't oh, make any fucking no, sense. No, it doesn't make but sense. But it's amazing to go see a midnight right, show. Right, right. I highly recommend it. Okay. But the other thing I've seen that is surprisingly similar to what this man thing is, I saw Terminator Salvation at the Mall of America, and they had it in these moving oh, yeah, seats yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. I saw that. I, I, and that's the only reason why that terrible movie, I kind of don't hate it, because I have fond memories of those things were yeah, well. It was called, it was called the, the D-Box. It was called D-Box. Is that what it was called? Yeah, I saw Clash of the Titans, the new Clash of the Titans. Oh, really? And I saw one of the Final Destinations. Final Destinations? One of the Final Destinations that's, in the Rumble seat, in the scene. That doesn't... Well, it wasn't good. That doesn't make sense. At least Clash of the Titans has action scenes. Yeah, it had the They're Pegasus really, fine scene. There's not yeah. like actual action scenes in Final Destination. No. There's just pure, like, like kid dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. not an action scene. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird gimmick that, you know. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Weird. But no, that's... Yeah. That's what I'm like. I was like, oh, I want to make sure I talk about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. But I've seen that, and I yeah. highly recommend the room for that. Yeah, yeah. Type sure. of spectacle thing, yeah, which yeah. is kind of what happens in here. Yeah. But here's the only thing. Now, I'm just not going to get downside. Yeah. It's just a movie thing. During the movie, yeah, which is completely sold out, by the way, yeah, they get up and go to some empty seats and hold a full conversation during the movie. I'm like, don't fucking talk during movies, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but granted, it's Mant. Talk during fucking Mant. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah. They really commented on how this is a sold out theater where the only seats that you might get are in the front row, and they yeah. go to like really nice seats How surrounded are they by yeah. empty seats and I'm yeah, like yeah, yeah. whatever it's uh, I mean it's, I kind of at that me. point it I, doesn't bother me no the, it's, it's just the thing I'm watching and I'm like but they really did comment this was sold out but there but are yeah. empty seats it's, okay it, yeah a part of it from being really funny it really captures the magic and love of film oh it and does and Joe Dante you can tell has a, an affection especially you know like in Gremlins all these movies that he makes Piranha he loves B movies he loves cheesy movies yeah. and he but not in like a oh I'm gonna make fun of them like I think he has an actual affection oh, yes. for these films. Oh, the, and the, it, the, this the, movie comes as a place of love. Oh yes, this in movie the, and the, it's great. The, yeah. the Matt scenes in this, yeah, where the where where the scientist guy will say a word and then give a definition of said word yeah. in the middle of a sentence. Yeah. And, uh, it's exactly it's, like it's those just movies. like yeah, holy they, shit, they did this it, is so fucking perfect. They just nailed it. And <laughs> what was great? So and I did this for all the movies. Um. After I watched, um, um, when I got back, when we got back from from things, so I was watching um, Cisco Niebert. I, I went back and on YouTube and watched reviews of all these movies by Cisco Niebert. They love this movie. They of gave it they did. two it's big the thumbs up. Audience for this movie. And what, what's what, it's funny because I when I went back to look, I went back to look at the reviews. That this they, was critically acclaimed across the board, yeah, well, and nobody saw that, this movie. That, that kind of stuff happens on occasion. It's and it, every it's like it got good reviews, and it just nobody saw it, and it's too bad. It's so weird. if you're listening to this so and you haven't good. seen Matinee and you love movies at I all, go watch this movie. That is the thing, because movies like this yeah. can thrive on word of mouth. Yeah. So I don't know how people go to see this movie and don't say, "Go fucking see that movie." Right. It's so much fucking yeah. Fun. It's so it's, it's so just awesome. It's so great. It's it's too bad that it did, that nothing happened it's, with it. It's yeah, it's weird. Too bad. But yeah, the, to go back in the other so two movies, good. they also they gave Toys and Distinguished Gentlemen two thumbs down. By the way, so. surprise. <laughs>
<laughs> but did. now we're on to the movies where I don't know what other people's reviews will be. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so Sniper is the next movie. Um, 1993 came out. Stars Tom Berenger and Billy Zane. I, I don't know Tom Berenger because it's on the posters. I did not know Billy Zane. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. So says, Tom, there's the poster. Tom Berenger is a big giant things on top. It was directed like, by Luis Losa, and he, um, before this movie, believe it or not. Only made made for video movies. This was his first theatrical film. Um, the director, the, the director, the director, really? director, yeah. I think this movie was an okay hit. Um, oh, actually, but looking, this, at, looking on this magical page, no, he did nineteen million. This, All these movies bombed like shit. So okay. this, but no, but, the, but the, this was his first theatrical film. All his movies went previous made yeah. for video before that. But this, and movie then he directed, must have done great on video. It did, it did, and he did two movies after this. He did. I don't know. Someone saw this movie and said, "Let's have him do the next Stallone movie." And they did the Specialist, which is a terrible movie. And then he directed. How much is that his fault? It's just during the spe- it's during the Stallone time where you just put Stallone in anything. Yeah. Okay. It was he was I, literally tricked into making Stop Around Animals. Yes, he was okay. by, by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> awesome. um, and then, but he also directed Anaconda. Anaconda is <laughs> terrible, but the right kind of yes, terrible. Yes, it is okay. the right kind of terrible. But then after that, then he did made for videos after that. So they did three theatrical films. Anyways, so yeah, this movie is an action movie and Tom Berenger plays a sniper and they have this, you know, they have a little um, prologue or whatever about, you know, showing him on a mission and one of his spotter gets killed. Then they have Billy Zane. Billy Zane is this guy. He's almost kind of like a desk jockey. He's from the army instead of the Marines. Right. But he got like a silver medal in the Olympics. Right. So he's like an amazing sniper. Right. But he's just hired to be the spotter. No kills, though. He has no kills he has no because kills. he's a freaking Olympic sniper. Right, okay. right, right, right. You don't actually shoot people in the Olympics. <laughs> okay. So, no. So, he hasn't. So, but anyway, so he gets hired to go on this mission. They're going to kill some whatever dictators, whatever. Then the, uh, they go into the jungle and, they, you know, he meets, uh, Billy Zane meets Tom Berenger and, of course, doesn't like him. because They're Tom not Ber- big fans of each other. No. Right and Tom Berenger's right. like, well, who are you? Because and, it's a movie and it would be boring if they became the best friends right, right off the right. bat. And then he had to watch two hours of that. Right. And so it's just like, you know, they, they don't like each other. Then they, you're, they, you're having a hard time describing this. No. So it's just like, no, what I, happens? I'm, I'm more interested in your review of this movie. Oh, than man. Mine. So so that's kind of the premise of it. They don't like each other and they're trying to get to the thing. Well, the thing it's, and that premise is fine, right? My problem, so I like Tom Berenger as an actor. And and, and he's not that in this. He's, not, actually, he's, actually he's fine in the movie. It's, and not that he, he he's he, the role he has to play. He plays it accurately because it's the only way to play. It's it. kind of one. You dimen- can make one a pretty one dimensional. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not gonna make jokes. So, <laughs> in a movie like this, where you're trying to have two people kind of pitted against each other, where they don't like each other, they really have to have chemistry. There really is. They do chemistry. not have chemistry. They do not have chemistry. And I think the main problem is Billy Zane. I, yes. He is not good in this movie. He's not very good in this. And he's just not a good actor in general. No, he's nothing um, special. No. And and he, I mean, he's his best role is probably the, the sleazy guy in Titanic. Which, I mean, it's, I mean he's good. It's tailor-made for him, probably. Because he, 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 he doesn't have to play a role. He can just be Billy Zane. Right. <laughs> it was, yeah, so this, oh, and, and his cameo in Zoolander is good. But... <laughs> He's, that was the best, the best thing he's ever done. Okay. Where he plays himself. He just shows up and he's like, "Can it, Zane?" You know? <laughs> but okay. I, I'm just thinking of another actor that would be pitted against Tom Berenger, and that would just because it should have like a Training Day type of feel, right? It should. I bit. guess there is that. There is a that is another way to go. And they're whereas, just. But the problem is, Billy Zane himself is already really good. Yeah. But he just can't bring himself to uh, shoot. People. Right. 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 Which and, I'm like, am I supposed to not like that? It yeah, like a legit problem. I I myself would have. Yeah, okay. me too. Right. <laughs> the problem that I have with the movie is the second half when they're doing when they're when they're you know getting in hairy situations and there's some action scenes and stuff and he can't still bring himself to kill someone and Tom Berger gets so mad and then they like get to a point where they start fighting each other and trying to kill each other. It happens right at the end. It comes out of nowhere. Comes really, out of nowhere and then it just goes away. Right. Well, and then Billy like, Zane actually takes the knife and legit drives just, it right at him, and Tom Berenger has to get out of the way, or he would have been stabbed in the head. Yeah. And but also keep in mind, Billy Zane legitimately tried to shoot him, but he was just out of bullets. Right. And I'm like, but then Tom Berenger is just like, I understand. Let's be friends again. And yeah. I'm like, what oh. the fuck just happened? And then he's like, you know what? I'll sacrifice <laughs> myself. You run away. Yeah. And, and then like, so now bro, he's Tom so now Berenger, Tom, shoot that piece of shit and leave. So last the last 15 <laughs> minutes of the movie, Tom Berenger is. Being tortured, Billy Zane comes and saves the day, and everything's cool. 
Yes. I didn't buy the, the, any of that the shit. The, no, none of it. One of the best things in it, though, is his full torture is he's just getting his index, he's getting his trigger like finger string? cut off. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, at the end of it, I'm like, is it cut off or is it just kind of fucked up? Well, I think it was a but string. Was what, a, they put a string around it. They put like a string and he it, was yeah. like pulling it tight and he's like screaming at the top of his lungs. And I'm like, I understand it, hurts. <laughs> okay? Oh, I'd be screaming. You'd be screaming at the top of your lungs. Well, you're fucking supposed to be this super war guy. <laughs> right, 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 right. You literally live in the forest for and like some three of his... weeks at a time. I, I, it's, it's not going to be great, but but also, here's the thing. Yeah. Right at the end, yeah. Billy Zane, he sees that Billy Zane is there because Billy Zane yeah. is terrible at stealth. And oh, he's so bad. Movie. He's always seeing. You can always see him, okay? <laughs> right. But he's like, then he like mouths two kills, one, one shot. Yeah. And I'm like, so he wants Billy Zane to kill him because he that didn't make finger? any sense to what me. What the fuck is going on here? It didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I'm very. It was very confusing. It was. So the absolute best sniper scene in this is the opening thing oh, yeah. where they're sniping. Yep. They have a they have the thing and all that stuff. Yeah. And then when they try to escape, the guys, they show up early. And so they're trying yeah. to escape in the daylight yep. and yep. he gets one of them killed. All that stuff, I'm like, this movie's pretty fucking good. Yeah. I think this movie's going to be great. And then the Billy Zane stuff happens and I'm like, yeah. he's kind of slowly going downhill. No, and by it's... the end, I'm like, this movie's not very fucking good. <laughs> no, I gave it a one and a half. It's for me. It's, I'm uh... trying to think. I'm, I'm one and a half to two. Yeah. It's something like that. It's Here, okay. Another weird thing. Whenever there is a sniper the bullet, shot, the bullet, and you can see like the air distortion behind it, but it never looks. So what good. it is? So it looks, so, the, it so looks the, like there's a tube. Behind so this it. is what it is. It looks like one of those plastic rods <laughs> holding does, the bullet, and it doesn't look it, like it's moving fast. No, it looks it's so just like, bad. That is a really weird choice. But once they made it, they kept doing it over and over, and I'm like, that is shitty. The su- most surprising thing about it. Is when I watched this Queen Ebert, two thumbs up. I was really? like, what? They liked it. Because here's the thing. I couldn't believe it. I didn't truly dislike it until that end action thing. And I'm like, I didn't buy oh, any of that here's shit. Here's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. This entire type of movie. Yeah. The end action is where it has to stand. Yeah. Up, and it is no, no good. No, okay? no good. No, no, you're right. It kind of starts off kind of promising, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, we're going to see where this is going to go. But yeah, Billy Zane And I also shows knew that and... they had made a bunch of them. And I'm like, huh, maybe. So I'm looking gone. right now. I'm looking on here. There's like eight more. <laughs> eight direct to video <laughs> sequels. Jesus and it kind of looks. And I think Berger is at least an only he's in, in the second he's one. In the, I think he's in the first two sequels. But I'm like, yeah, does yeah. he. Here's the thing. It's not like I'm uninterested. I want to know are those prequels or does he not have his finger anymore and he has to figure out a different, <laughs> a different way to shoot people? I don't understand. Because I don't know. at the end of it, he has to shoot somebody, but he has to use his oh, left hand. Oh, hold on. I'm looking at the plot of the second one. He's discharged after his finger was amputated in the first film. There okay. You, I also your wasn't truly clear if he lost it or if it was just like fucked up. It was not clear. It was, it was not, not clear. Because they even showed him trying to like use his middle finger to pull a trigger. <gasps> but I, and you could see Billy his Zane's finger. in the fourth one. I, I did I did oh, check that and I saw that he came back for one of them. Oh no. <laughs> in the fourth but one. What sniper three has yeah, is Tom Berenger's in the Wow Berger really kind of needed money apparently in the He did. Yes he did. Yeah, he stopped. He did he did a lot of made for video stuff. Weird. Okay. Ultimate kill sniper. And then after the Billy Zane one, I assume it's just people we never heard of. Maybe somebody else playing the. Tom I Berger guess it'll be like that. Scott Atkins like, or something. Here, why do we care? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, Tom Berger! Oh my God, he's in so many of these he's fucking in the movies. Twenty twenty. Oh my God! Look at how old he is in that fucking poster. <laughs> Sniper there's Assassin's the, there's, there's End. A, there's a hot chick that they're trying to kill. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I can't believe that. That what? That wasn't even the. Who that the was the last, these movies. Oh my God! There's not even a link to the last one that came no. out earlier. That earlier. Oh, there. Yeah, year. he's in. Billy Zinn and Tom Berenger in Ultimate Kill. Oh my god! Twenty seventeen. What the hell? You're man? gonna you're gonna watch them all. I'm not gonna you? watch any of these. <laughs> but I did not know that was that long of a thing. I, yeah, I can't believe it. And it's not. It's funny because there are so many better movies that you could make sequels of. I Why know. would you choose this? Well, here's the thing: the premise of a sniper, yeah, yeah. is interesting. Yeah. The fact that some of these sniper things, other than the weird air distortion that you can see, <laughs> were like, those are actually kind of interesting. I like that they have the accuracy of, you have a spotter. You have a spotter. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. He did mention, sometimes you're alone, but most of the time you're with two. And I'm like, 
This is all legit. At one point <laughs> during his interrogation, they yeah. ask him what he is. He goes, Lee Harvey Oswald. And I'm like, that's interesting and fun. Yeah, yeah, This yeah, movie yeah. is not very good, though. No, and, <laughs> and I'm, yeah. And you Just can't, these fond memories of a couple of things. I'm you, going full, you, I'm going one and a half. You so. can't, okay, you can't blame Tom Berenger for this movie. No, so, you like, can't. He's, Tom Berenger is the best thing in this absolutely. movie. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the rest of the movie is the worst thing in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it looks fine. Yeah, I was. It takes place in like Panama. Yeah. Apparently, according to this, it was shot in Queensland, Australia. But I'm yeah, like, it yeah. legit looks like Panama to me. Okay. No, the, it, the locations look good. <laughs> yeah, I've never sure. been to Panama, so no, I assume been. it looks like Panama. <laughs> <laughs> all right, last movie. Um, we had to drive all the way to Edina to go. Oh see. my god, it was like forever. <laughs> so Lorenzo's Oil was what we had. Lorenzo's to see, so. Oil, a movie I had heard of. So this was only one this is the only showing this day. It was 955 which at is this odd theater. because this movie came out uh in September or it was, it, it was December oh, it was 30th, Dece- 1992. Oh, so it actually wasn't that old. I mean, so it's a longer movie. <laughs> so this is yeah, so the reason like I said I wanted to see it um was George Miller directed it and he directed the first three Ma- well all the Mad Max movies. Um he directed yes. Witches of Eastwick. Was the movie he made before this? That Penguins Dancing movie. He made Happy Feet and Happy Feet Two, Babe Two, Pig in the City, which a really great movie. I've never seen that one. That I was Gene it. Siskel's last best movie because he died in ninety nine. Oh, it's one Gene of those Siskel ones gave that, that number people, one. Of the year. It's, it's awesome. I, you know, I've never seen Paddington Two either, and that's I've heard those are supposed amazing. to be really good. Yeah. I've, I've seen the first one. I don't know. It seemed very much by the numbers. The first one. But you saw the Nick Cage to... movie, right? Where they yes, they, yeah, that's so they, they mentioned it again. Yes, yes. But no, yeah, I've heard the Paddington movies are good. So no, I really wanted to see Lorenzo's Oil. Um, always. Um, I didn't know anything about it, and I think when I knew we started uh, talking I... about you when we started talking about it before we went back in time and I chose this movie, you're like, oh, it's about the ALD, and you knew about the disease. I knew that, that they knew... invent this thing for their kid, and it like heals them. And so and here the... was my concern going in. Yes. I'm like, they're going to invent some bullshit in their fucking kitchen, and it's just going to be this nonsense. And then, they, but they proclaim it. No, there's like a shit ton of like scientists involved. There's yeah, like debates, yeah. and they're mm-hmm, like doing mm-hmm, research. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is actually not nearly as annoying as I thought it was going to be, except for one part. Jesus Christ, what the fuck was Nick Nolte oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Okay, we're on the same page on this movie. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so Lawrence is oil. Yes, Nick Nolte, Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon was nominated for this movie. Um, Peter Ustinov's in this too. Uh, okay, yeah, award winner. There's, yeah. A, there's a lot of there's a lot of really p- good people in this. Yep. So um, the kid is oh, okay. Never mind. This <laughs> is the kid. So Lorenzo is is a kid, and uh, he's whatever, like six, seven, eight. Uh, in the um, beginning, yeah, something like that. And his parents, played by Susan well, they're Sarandon, like, it starts off in Africa. Yeah, and yeah. Then they just sort of just go back to the U.S. Well, Africa, but you don't really That's know. That's just a setup for a character who shows up later. That right, they right, have right. To, it's just an explanation why they know this guy. Right, it right. Doesn't really do that anything scene could have been cut out. That yep, scene totally could have been cut out. Anyway, so the actual premise of the film, though, is this kid has this rare disease that happens really only in male boys. Yep. Passed through only by the mother. Yeah, I didn't know any of that shit. That was like... It that, really that, weird. That was... And I, I, I'm i not going to be able to pronounce that. It's ALD. ALD is what you're going to call it. <laughs> you going to try it? A- no, I don't fucking... I can't Adrenal- say shit. Adrenalgastrophy. That's exact. That was perfect. <laughs> that didn't sound like you had marbles in your mouth or anything. <laughs> ALD. So it's, it's a weird disease where it affects... The brain that's not getting the saturated fats or something yeah, like that? Yeah, like, well, it removes, well, here's the, the explanation in this Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, all your nerves have, like, a coating around them yeah. that insulates them. Yeah. And this gets rid of that, and then the nerve stops working. And right. it is in your brain. So you yeah. literally stop having so you, a brain. Yeah, you, you are deaf, Slowly. you are blind, you yeah. can't talk. You, it, you, it, it's, it's worse than any prison you've ever fucking imagined. Yeah, it looks, like, a, a awful. <laughs> it's truly awful. Yeah. And the last name of the family is Odone. Adone. He, he, some people pronounce it Adone, and he, he, he corrects them. Odone. Odone. But, yeah, okay, here, here's, here's the voice you just did. Adone. A trillion times better than Nick Nolte's. <laughs> <laughs> so, God damn, is it so, terrible. Well, the whole, the whole time, so they're trying to uh, find a cure for their son, but they, they said... Two years tops. Your kid has two years tops. Yeah. And then the movie kind of just jumps around like every five or ten minutes it goes one month later, I two mean, months later, There is one actual month later, times two months on later. there, which yep. I appreciate. Because yep. other movies have done this where you're just like, you jump like, and you don't know jump, where you are. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck's going on? When is this um, taking place? Oh, it's winter now? But it keeps jumping. <laughs> so you see the progress or not the progress, but like the deterioration of the sun. But then they do come up with some kind of thing 
of they call it Lorenzo's oil and here's the thing I don't think in the movie they ever actually use the terms Lorenzo's, Lorenzo's oil. oil they talk about it's an oil that they give to Lorenzo right 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 stuff like that they never actually say the word no. Lorenzo's oil in so the movie. <laughs> and and is, there is debate is it actually helping and it's they like a, think it does like it's like a diet thing yeah. basically because and, they give he's been he's given a diet early yeah, in the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you need to do this because he can't do this long chain saturated fats. Yeah. So you give him none of those in his diet. Yeah. You can have none. So he basically just eats noodles. Okay. Yeah. And apparently it's he's still getting the saturated fats because your body fucking makes them. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so they, through research, legit like going to research libraries and them and yeah. for months. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this isn't I thought this was gonna be like just silly nonsense and i'm like no they're doing their homework this is what they did yeah they're doing the homework uh they talk to other doctors yeah if you give some if you give your if you feed them a certain type of fat because they found it in rats they will their body will actually stop making the bad fats right and i'm like that's interesting and i can understand why you would actively want to try this yeah they do kind of go up against uh, the fact that you have to actually test these things to find out yes. if they actually work. Yeah, yeah. And they really get mad. And I guess I'm going to do most of the synopsis on this. No, one. you I'll can. Send, Please. Okay. Feel free. <laughs> okay, because Feel I, free. I've done some research yeah, on this. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Okay. Go for it, man. Um, they are doing what the parents in this, which is completely understandable, but also all the other uh, ALD yeah. parents. Some of them are, 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 are butting heads. Yeah. And there's, okay. Okay, let's talk about some of the acting. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll cut to some of the acting. Nick Nolte's voice, his accent is, I don't know what the fuck's going on. So this is what is happened. He, is he playing a deaf person who has no, no, never no. talked before? No, no. Because his voice so, doesn't make any sense. He should say, he's supposed to be Italian. Yeah. He should, he should sound like not he's Susan Sarandon's not, though. No, no. He's an Italian person. He should sound like he's in a fucking mob or something. Okay? That's an Italian accent so, to my ears. And this, halfway, no, he talks like he is a deaf person who has only recently Did you notice talk. right away? Because I didn't notice until his third scene. So his third scene, I'm like, wait a minute. Is he trying to do an Italian accent? That's what... No, I knew that's what he was trying to do. But the first scene, I didn't There's, notice that. In the credits... It shows Nick Nolte's accent specialist, and I'm like, "Oh, that fire, guy should be fired! Fire the fuck out of that, that guy! Should Holy shit, fired. his accent's terrible!" Okay, <laughs> there's actually like one scene where Nick Nolte gets really angry and starts screaming, and he kind of loses the accent. He kind of like, every time he... that was pretty good. No, <laughs> that was a good scene. Nick Nolte might be able to act. Okay? Right, right. So I got to talk about so um the good in this movie. George Miller's direction. He's a really good director. George Miller now, is good in this. So you know he's a pretty like he's a kind of a hyper filmmaker as far as the way he does his camera work and stuff. And he makes it work a little bit for the dramatic stuff. Like there's a lot of scenes where, you know, when the kid's struggling and the camera just like, Oh, quick. Does a quick zoom on. Him. There are, new, there's a few kids who play Lorenzo in there. Yeah. They're all fucking amazing. Yeah. Did they actually yeah. get kids with this? No, I don't think so. I don't think because so. Because any one of these kids is fucking amazing. Yeah. The worst acting performances in this movie are sadly Nick Nolte and Susan Sarandon. Really? Oh, really? I like Susan. Good. No, I, no, it, she it was not okay, good. But oh, I think her sister was better. She was really good. Every other AL, a, uh, ALD parent yeah. is better. There's the kid, the other kid who is yeah. going to get this mm-hmm. in the future, who then sees yeah. Lorenzo and he sees his own future. And that kid is more terrified of than you've ever yeah. seen of anybody in the fucking history. And I'm like, how oh, is everybody else so good in this movie? And I just, just, Susan Ryan is okay in it. I actually like Susan nominated. Good. I thought she was but, good. But every time Nick Nolte was, was on there talking, and I'm just like, yeah. I honestly, I'm not sure what he said, because so it was so am, fucking terrible. So, <laughs> so I liked, I, I liked the direction. So I thought the, the camera work and everything, like George Miller has really creative shots in this movie. There's um, one weird thing. I did read, like yeah. I said, I read yeah. a bunch of stuff about this. Uh, there's one review where they said the best scene in it is Nick Dolte crying on the stairs. And no! Like, really? That is terrible. That is an awful scene. That, was an awful that just scene. came out of nowhere and he's just like <laughs> crying on so, this thing. And there's like the shot of it is also yeah, terrible. Yeah. It's like, are we supposed to be angels watching well, him sing? Why are we floating through the from fucking the, air? From a, technic- <laughs> from a technical aspect, I thought it was um, really good. However, I, I do think that 
George Miller should have done something because I'm not going to blame Nolte fully for this. It is George Miller's, I, it was his direction telling Nolte to do this. Yeah, well, I, here's the thing. I'm wondering if the actual guy sounds somewhat like that and Nolte was just trying to yeah, impersonate yeah, yeah. the way the yeah, guy I'm not actually sure. sounds. I'm not sure. But I'm not this is sure. based on true story. Yeah. I feel like in this movie, you don't throw Nick Nolte under the bus and you make him just have a really slight accent. Yeah. Okay. Or just say, be fucking Nick Nolte. Yeah, okay? absolutely. The, the, before I get to Nolte's performance, because okay. I'm going to be getting into <laughs> Nolte. So, but, uh, uh, so I like Susan Sarandon. I like the direction. Um, even without the Nolte stuff, there is still, I still had a couple problems with the movie to actually be engaged in care. Oh, okay. The, the, what, what, what I had a problem with the movie was even without Nolte's performance, I still would have had a problem with the movie because how it jumps, it keeps jumping all the time, which is fine. But every time it jumps, it's always giving you information about the plot, moving the plot forward. There are no character moments in this film to get to know the characters. In fact, then the beginning of the movie, you Weirdly, meet the you, best character moments are with her, like her sister, right? Well, you and stuff like exactly. That. It's weird. So you meet the kid, you meet the kid very briefly, and all of a sudden he's got it. There, I feel like there needed to be establishing character moments in the first fifteen minutes of the movie because you really didn't hear Nolte talk for the first fifteen minutes of this movie. Yeah. And then when he does, you're it, like, and it what was, just happened? And it wasn't until, <laughs> you don't really hear him talk until the kid gets diagnosed. So there is no, you don't, you don't see, like, look at, look, I'm looking at the poster right now. You see in this loving picture mm -hmm. of Nolte and Sarandon and their son together. There is not a scene, establishing scene like that in the movie. There should have been. No. To, well, to get okay. him, no, to, to, to establish their sense of family, like, uh, like their love for each other. You don't get that. At the beginning of the movie, no, so you, when things are you, happening, you get stuff. Some some character stuff does happen later, later where they later. have marital marital conflict. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because at some point, Nick Nolte understands why the other parents are literally saying, "You're literally just prolonging your son's torture." Yeah. Because he just sits, he just lies in a bed, having the occasional horrible seizure. Yeah. He cannot talk. He cannot. He cannot, he does, he can't see, no get here, yeah. You just sit there and you tell him stories. Yeah. And that's all you're fucking doing for yeah. the rest of your life. And even if this stuff is prolonging that, it's never going to improve him. Right. Now, at the end of the movie, there's some slight improvement. Yeah. And then in the end credits, they say, so he could kind of move his toes a little bit. And I'm like, but when you look into it, he yeah. died at the age of 30. 30, 30 and yeah. And he was blind and he hadn't been able to talk in years. He, he had never talked again. Yeah. He lived. 20 years of fucking hell. Yeah. And it was, I don't know if that, that oil did it or it was just because the mother character was willing to sit there and just do everything for him. Yeah. And so he just kept fighting. Yeah. I don't know what the reality is because yeah. after, well, okay, I'm jumping way ahead. No, it's fine. But the actual research that has been done since this movie, now this movie came out in 92. Yep. The movie the storyline of the movie takes place and it ends in like 89. Yep, yep. It's 84. really not that much longer no. afterward when they started no. making this fucking movie. No. In reality, they have done a bunch of research and it even shows, it does legitimately, when you do testing, it seems to get rid of those things, but it doesn't seem to actually help no. with the disease in nope. any way. Nope, nope, nope. And also, the movie also seems to kind of show that if you have similar diseases, you can do this. And other, but the research has said, and it only works for ALD. Right. And not even, it doesn't even really even work for it. No. But I understand when this movie came out, it looked like a fucking super miracle. It did. That, and they had come up with this thing. It fully makes sense. Yep. It's just that we now live 30 years in the future. Yes. And it doesn't hold up. Okay. <laughs> it does not. No, no, no. All right. Now my Nick Nolte. So in general. You're, well, you're Nick Nolte. I'm sorry. I hate you now. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Nolte's actually, I think he's one of the best American actors. I actually, actually he is. The stuff he's good I actually he's good. really like Nick Nolte. And like so I, said, I was, there's that one screaming scene where I he's was, really good. I'm like, God damn, why is he bad? I was else? really <laughs> looking forward to this movie because oh, of Nolte. okay. I and feel bad that when he started talking, so you're when like, he, no! well, he started, like I said, did I didn't notice. Screaming? I didn't it was like you. his second scene, second or third scene that he was talking. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, wait a minute. Is he talking in a? It's weird. His accent? accent when he starts. Talking, we don't pick it out right away because he. It gets thicker. 
Well, as it goes the on, reason, I'm like, the re- don't you live in America? You're supposed to lose your accent. Well, the reason why you don't you don't hear it right away because Nolte's got a very raspy voice. Yes. So he kind of talks like this. But he, so I didn't really yeah. hear it at first, but then he's like, I Odone, and he talked uh, like uh, this. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. what? I'm like, what the fuck? It is and I'm like, are you supposed to talk in the Italian? It is, what the hell is wrong with you, is, Nick Nolte? <laughs> it's so I'm better at Italian. I am gonna say this. <laughs> Nolte made a choice. And he was very dedicated I do to do this. There's a chance that the actual guy talks like that. Oh, yeah. And so he just had to go with that. He was really dedicated and he made a choice and he goes for it. I'm going to respect that. I respect that. It was so distracting to me it is. that every any, time he talks, any I'm like, scene, oh my God. I couldn't concentrate on the plot. I yeah. couldn't concentrate on what was going yeah. on. I could just hear him. And especially towards the end of the movie, when he was doing that thing, when he was explaining the the actual like how it works on that blackboard. Oh God! And he was like, like, and then we go over here, and yep. and then his voice got like in a I higher only, pitch. I, the only the reason I, the only reason I know any of that stuff is because that doctor said stuff when he talked. I have no idea what the fuck he was saying. It, yeah, his just, it was baffling. His me. accent was so distracting. And like I said, I can't say it was a terrible performance. I'm gonna say it was a terrible choice. It was a bad choice. Really bad. And it might have been a choice. George Miller choice. It might have been a Nick Nolte choice. It might choice. be both we of them. I don't know. I don't it's not full, I'm not gonna blame it fully on Nolte. I would somewhat compare this with the baffling choice in Dark Knight Rises where you can't understand what the fuck Bane, Bane says. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, yeah. Just fucking fix this. Very, okay? I was... And in Knock Knight Rises, it's worse, because that's all voiceover. You could have fucking changed that three hours before the movie came out. Yeah. Okay, you yeah. could have fixed all that. Yeah. Okay, and this, no, you're stuck with Nick Dolte yes. when he was on the set. Okay. So, I, that, so <laughs> very disappointing. I actually, so because of that, the whole, and the movie's two hours and it says twenty nine minutes. It flew by for me. It was actually I actually kind of didn't hate the movie. Oh. I just hated Nick Nolte. So and I also knew going in, I'm like, this is not. So this didn't actually hold up. So because I didn't really care about the characters, because I didn't think they did a good establishing stuff early on, and Nolte's distracting performance, I really didn't like it. So I'm, I get do give it a one and a half. Oh, okay, I'm gonna see here. Um, uh, here's the thing, the stuff that's good. Yeah. Which is weirdly. Everything that isn't the family, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, the yeah. kid, the kid is amazing. Yeah, yeah, every, yeah. Every the kid's time. really good. But when you see other mm-hmm. AL, AD, ALD families, yeah. when you see the scientist, yeah. even just yeah. that weird old guy at the end who makes the that oil was for them, weird, and yeah. then that was, I'm assuming, a thing that really happened. Where yeah. this guy came out of, or like right before he retired, he just had this. He said, "Sure, I'll try to make your super magic oil by removing all this stuff from <laughs> rapeseed oil, which is now canola oil." Right, right, right. That's been renamed because of obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he said that, I was like, huh? <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. Nick Nolte does say the word rapeseed a lot in this movie. <laughs> and I'm like, why is the only word I can ever understand him saying is rapeseed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was really looking forward to this one. So this was a big disappointment for me. Okay, maybe um, it's because I was going in expecting this to be... This these they came up with this magical bullshit yeah. in their fucking thing, but no, they did research. Yeah. They had to get yeah. a lot of fucking help. Yeah. They had to go through channels to a degree. Yeah. They just also fought against like any type of real testing, which I understand. You want to save your kid, yeah. But they actively get in arguments on a time where it's like where the doctors are saying this is for future children. There's nothing we can do about your kid, mm-hmm. but if if we use your kid in research, future children can be helped. And they get mad. You're not going to help our kid. And I'm like, your kid's fucking <laughs> fucked. There's nothing we can do about it, okay? <laughs> right, right, right. There's nothing that can be done about it. But there <laughs> is maybe a mild chance of future people. But you literally don't want to do real testing with your oil no. to find out. No. You just want everybody to start using it, which is the thing when they do real testing later, it doesn't hold up. No. So I'm like, I understand both sides of this thing, which is weirdly like, I'm like, boy, I actually kind of like this movie. But god damn that Nolte shit is terrible. Yeah. God damn really, it's so fucking really, terrible. It's literally possibly it's the worst choice I've seen in a character. Yeah. In it was a long it was, time. So I also had a hard time in a movie. There's a movie. I'm I'm starting to come up with my stars. I'm I'm not sure yet. No, it's okay. <laughs> so did you ever see Blood Diamond? I have not seen Blood Diamond. So does he have Leo, a weird accent? In that? <laughs> Leo makes a choice yeah. to do a South African accent. 
Yeah. It is. I, I can't. It's so distracting. It's so, I, I can't really? say it's bad. It's just a choice that I did not like. And I'm just yeah. like, it's so, every time he opens his mouth, I'm like, oh, he was nominated for Best Actor for it, too. But it's well, really. Because that, that, that was at the point where he hadn't won anything. And they're yeah, like, we've got to give him a fucking award eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to nominate him every time he does anything. That is That's what happened. Not yeah. you're literally killing people. Right, okay. Right. Well, it, it sucked <laughs> because the same year he was in The Departed. Nominate him for that one. Not. Yeah, Blood Diamond. That was odd. weird. That's that's but he wasn't Diamond. the lead. Well, he was the lead was. Departed, I guess. Him and Matt Damon, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, so but yeah, this was really, really, really distracting. Oh, and uh, Because so. of the certain aspects of it. The fact that a there's two, a conflict. Maybe? I might go two and a half. Really? Okay. Just no. Be, no, but here's no, the no. thing. This movie, if Nolte does it and if, is better in it, if, I'm going to give this like three and a half stars. Oh. I have to pull off one to one and a half stars. I will say this. because of how unwatchable he is. I will say this. <laughs> Nolte, if Nolte just didn't have an accent. If he, he would just have, played Nolte. He would have been nominated. I think you're right. He would have been had to act. He's, no, he's that good of an actor. He that, is good. No, he he's is awesome. Good. He would have been nominated for it I if think he didn't right. have an accent. But he would have been did great. he get a Razzie nomination? No, I don't think so. <laughs> No, uh, in what fact, did, what, so, did, what does Cisco and Ebert say? So, first of all, before I watched Cisco and Ebert, I looked up the reviews. It has like a 90 some percent Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Every review that I came across were pr- saying both Nolte and Sarandon are terrific. But they're fucking wrong. Then I watched Cisco and Ebert. They gave it two thumbs up. Okay. Which I can understand. But. But. Gene Cisco did go, Nolte is wrong in the movie. I didn't like his accent. And Roger Ebert said, I didn't like it at first, but I got used to it. Is what, what I Roger... No, I never got used to it either. I never got but used Roger it. Ebert said he got used to it. Roger Ebert said, I, I got, got used, used to it and ended up really liking because it. Because every time he talked, I couldn't understand half the stuff he was and saying. Gene, there, was no, there was no getting used to it. Gene is kind of on, on your camp where he's like, it distracted me enough that I that I, I couldn't stand it. However, the, the rest of the movie I liked. Okay. So then, so he ended up recommending it, but he said, I don't recommend Nolte, but I recommend the movie. I think it's just weird, because yeah. I went into this expecting yeah. to be really annoyed and really hating it. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. well, it wasn't really that terrible. It wasn't like, it might just be a reaction to me, like going, oh, that movie actually kind of did everything it should do. Yeah. Except for a couple of, yeah. like, mostly the right at the end where he moves his, like, pinky. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like... Why are you making moves Pinky? The Pinky's like one of the harder ones to move by itself. Just move your fucking thumb. Yeah. Okay, but yep. whatever. Okay. No, but yeah, so I was disappointed. So what are you at? Uh, two and a half, you said. I, two and a half. Two and a half. That's Would enough. you give it two? I, no, one and a half. One and a half. Okay. It was so, I couldn't, I, it was, it, it bothered me that much. It's mostly that there were bothered parts me that much. where when Nick Dolte wasn't on screen, I'm like, this movie's pretty good. But Nolte, <laughs> every time he was on, I'm like, whoops, this movie sucks. And, also, and I, it's also because he was distracted in the movie and also knowing the fact that he's capable of actually giving an Oscar-worthy performance. Yes. That that was the frustration for me. It was just yeah. like, I know that he was I understand. I able understand. to do it. Fully understand. So that was it, yeah. So, that was, so movie oh, of the matinee. Matinee by matinee, 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 Miles. <laughs> by a four-star movie. Yeah, yeah. Matinee. The best movie up um, there with the best movies we've seen for this show. Yeah, I think so. The, Matinee is one of the better ones, be, for sure. Might be the only four star I've given. Did I give no, one Lady of, Killers. Did I give that four stars? Yeah. I, it was between that and for, Lady Killers. For me, the two best we've it's still seen. probably Casualties of War for me. Casualties of War is good, but the, I, I had a couple of like... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sean Penn uh, moments. <laughs> well, yeah, the Sean Penn. Although, was, compared to Nick Nolte, his voice is fucking amazing. <laughs> well, never mind, okay? Best performance, I best guess. Best performance. Oof. I'm trying to think. Matinee is good, but I don't know if there's... It might be... I think it would be like the second... Or the kid who played Lorenzo. Oh, yeah. Because there were like six kids. And yeah. my think is mostly that think later was, on they would show I think this older. is the major one. Zach O'Malley Greenberg yeah, was the one. Yeah, I think he was the one who yeah. did it most of the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And he was so good. When he, he really is good. When he's in that like uh, operating thing or that mm-hmm. in that like... Uh, university room or whatever and he's trying to ask why these other people are in the room yep it just fucking broke my heart yeah it was so fucking just oh my god so and then and that was literally the part where the doctor is just saying they're here because they want to help they want to help future children yeah they're, they're literally saying yeah. there's nothing we can do about it yeah. you're going to die a horrible death yeah there's nothing that can be done about it yeah 
but future children, maybe we can help them. So mine for me is you're going to 100% disagree, but I, and it's just because I've seen it so many times and I just love his performance. I'm going to fucking punch you in the throat. Michael, if you say... Michael Gambon for oh, okay. toys. I if love. you said Robert Williams. No, 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 gonna, no, no, no. I was no. going to find a rope and I kill you. love Michael Gambon <laughs> in, 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 as General Zeebo. I think he's so great. He's like the, good. The scene when he's like shooting the. <laughs> Trying to shoot the fly in the room, and he shoots himself. Like that, that's funny to me. I don't know. Um, that movie just—it started off with me just being annoyed. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I really I like Michael Gambon. I can't get past how annoyed everybody is. His performance me. in that movie is really good. But, but biggest surprise for me was probably Lorenzo's oil for being. I was so disappointed. Like, bad really? Surprise. That's my biggest surprise is how much I wasn't as disappointed as I expected. <laughs> I thought that would that's be the... one of those ones I might start ranting and screaming and raving about, and I'm like. No, it was pretty good. So that's both of our surprises, <laughs> but really for exact. Opposite. I mean, I get to rant and rave about Nick Nolte. I was, just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was that was a surprise. I was not expecting to me to hate a Nolte performance because I've never hated a Nolte oh. performance. Here's the thing: it's it's mostly is I guess it's the accent. The accent kind of it's the accent. He can't act through the accent. No, the accent no. is so prevalent on his brain wherever he's talking yeah. that he has no ability to even fucking act. He's like. I have to keep talking like Robot Man. Oh, I'm like, it's so... what the fuck's wrong with you, Nick Nolte? Yeah, <laughs> it was really, really hard to watch. But so next time we are—I don't know the exact date—but we're going back to 1939. Yeah, very important really. year in cinema. I'm so, looking forward to watching. Oh, I'm, movies I've never heard of probably I'm, from 1939. I'm gonna get the get my old suspenders out and my uh, my hat and wow, you're gonna wear your bowler? Yeah, no, I, oh, I do have a bowler though. I could, I could get a bowler. Well, I was gonna wear bowler. like the little driver's cap, you know, like the little oh, news, the I, newspaper, I could, the newsboy. I, could, I have a big Soviet cap. If you're ever <laughs> oh went back to 1939, I'd be laying on the street. You're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna think of Russia. Oh no, that would be dangerous. <laughs> But yeah, so that'll be uh, that'll be next time. Nineteen thirty nine will be fun. So I'm oh, it will looking, be. I'm looking forward. Looking to forward it. to some movies. It's the only reason I've even done this podcast for nineteen thirty nine. Nineteen thirty nine. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Um. Um. Yeah. I'm your host, Austin Kennedy. This is I'm Tim Kaiser. All right, and we'll see you next time. Oh, you did it! <laughs> you did it right! Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. All right. See you guys.